Our gospel lesson comes in the context of Jesus having uh, washed the feet of the disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, and now he is speaking to them what they need to hear. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and the glory and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends our gospel lesson. On the morning of Saturday, March 23rd of this year, our confidence gathered together to share their faith. Some were nervous. Some were scared. You could tell by the way they were handing, or handling their faith statements, trying to turn them into tissue paper with their nervousness. Many were excited. We gathered to hear their faith statements. We gathered to lift them up in their beliefs. The format was simple, but firm. One person shares and everyone listens. Now that might not sound like a lot, but over the past two years in confirmation class, that is not how it always went. There was lots of talking that happened, but this time it did, and there was a profound effect all four invited them to share how they appreciated the faith statement and what was shared. In that simple time, we had a very profound experience of how Jesus wanted church, the gathering of God's children, to be. A new commandment I give you, to love one another just as I have loved you. That is church in Jesus' mind. And in that confirmation retreat, in that time, and for others later, our young people sharing their beliefs, their faith, their vulnerability, that was real church. That was church the way Jesus thought it should be. And because they supported each other in the midst of that time, it came to be where they could trust one another in even a deeper way. Because they supported each other with a love blessed by Jesus, some had the courage to say, I wasn't going to share this. It wasn't to their face there. I wasn't going to share this. But I've been bullied for being fat. I wasn't going to share this. But my friend has been suicidal. I wasn't going to share this, but someone I care deeply for in my family is got cancer. It was this powerful event, encouraged by Jesus' spirit of love, that helped them to share their vulnerability and be real church for one another. Some of you know what I'm talking about. My hope in this day of celebration is that I can give you a taste of the experience of church real church that they experienced on that day and continue to experience in each other. And see how God can be that loving church for all of us as well. And I want to do this by sharing parts of their faith statements. Um, that's what got us to that point that day, trusting each other and sharing how we believed. And so I want to be, uh, share with you that experience as well and how Jesus' love shared in that experience made a difference to them. Now, I'll be honest, that whole retreat wasn't all buggy done. It wasn't all the way church was meant to be. We played some nine square games that got pretty vicious. And we and there was drama later on in the evening, and uh, there was drama I'm sure I didn't know about. I was thankful for that, too. <laughs> but the truth is, once you know the power of Jesus' love in a community of love and support, you want to experience that again and again. And let's see if we can help you experience what they experienced that day. The gospel lesson helps us with that. Jesus gives a new command. He does not demand it. He gives it. It 
It's a gift. The command to love is a gift. I'm sure he used the word command to be over against the other commandments, which were do not. This is a do. Love the way I have loved. I'm sure he also used that word because he wanted to tell us how important it is, how uh, important it is to fulfill that commandment of love. It's a gift to us, and we're supposed to use that gift of love. In fact, this is the gift that will be the way that we know each other. The world knows us as Christians, is that our hallmark is to be love. The first way that we came to know this gift is by how we experience Jesus, because he says, love the way I have loved you. Here are some of the ways that the compliments have known Jesus' love. Connor Kuhn said, Jesus is the Son of God who was crucified to save us from our sins. He did not deserve to die for us because he did nothing wrong, but he did it because he loved us. This shows how much Jesus cares for me and others. Jesus to me is my protector who will watch over me, give me advice, care for me when, I, when I'm hurt or injured, and always be there for me no matter what. Nicole Verdusco says, Jesus is our Savior and Hero. Jesus is our Savior because He suffered and died on the cross and then rose again, so all of us, good or bad, would have no sin. Jesus is our Hero because He was able to control disease and cure incurable diseases. He was sent by God so He could teach us and help us become better people. Rachel Eckert kind of fleshes this all out and helps us to know Jesus in this way. Jesus is a big part of my life. Many things come to mind when I think of Jesus. He is God's son. He died for us. He died for our sins. He helps in leading me in the right direction and teaches me how to become a better person. He is with me when I'm in different situations and places. Two situations come to mind when I look at him, look to him, when I look to him. First was that Korean camp a few years ago when I was bullied and I felt all alone. The second time I turned to Jesus was last summer when my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer. At first the diagnosis seemed good, chemo and six years of life. Then on June 10th my family's life changed when we were told his cancer spread rapidly and he was given six months only to see him fade away before my eyes and die one week later. If there is a time when I needed someone to talk to, Jesus is always with me. I can talk to him about good things and bad things and he will always understand. Jesus came to earth to set an example, teaching everyone how to love one another and get along. Knowing Jesus his loving and forgiving life, his sacrificial death, leads us to be loving and caring as well. Real church fosters this kind of love and care. It highlights openness and acceptance. Our confirmation uh, students experienced church in a big way that day on the retreat, but they've always experienced church in many ways before. Some have grown up in the church and have family that started that experience for them, and others have come to it later. Let's hear their, their experience of church prior to the retreat. Nick Halverson said this, God has been there by my side from the time I was born. My parents had me baptized and I've been going to Bethel Lutheran Church throughout my whole life. Sunday school and confirmation have taught me about faith in God. I feel closest to God at church when I pray. If I'm feeling sad or lost, I know that God will be there next to me, watching over me and protecting me from the badness. Hunter Quaddy says this, I believe that the church is very essential in the role of the Christian faith. I feel that the church provides a place for myself and others to learn and experience the Christian faith. Many people also use the church as a place to talk to God. Without a church, I think that many people would feel lost and have no one to talk to when they really need someone to just listen to them. Molly Melcha 
I asked her before how to say it. I, it's been, anyway. One of the most common places to celebrate faith is the church, Molly says. One of the most important institutions on earth. It is somewhere I will always feel welcome. Church is a place filled with caring, concerned, and genuinely loving people. I feel comfortable sharing and embracing my beliefs and values there. It's a place where my voice will always be heard. Church is also a great place to go if I ever need guidance or reassurance. Throughout my life, I hope to regularly attend church with family and other loved ones. Alyssa came to Bethel a little bit later, Alyssa Stitch. My faith has always been something I have mainly kept to myself. When I first started going to Bethel, I didn't really know anyone and was worried that I would, not have, to, uh, that I would have to share my faith with a bunch of strangers. Luckily for me, I never had to have that experience. I remember the very first day I went to church on Wednesday. I was so nervous, I didn't know, think I would know anyone, and due to my fear of telling people about my faith, I was up all night. That day I met my group, and they were so welcoming right away. All my fear was gone. I got to know everyone really well. My confirmation group was even better. I got the opportunity to become really good friends with everyone in my group, and I could share my faith openly with everyone. They helped me grow as a person and in my faith in God. It is the love and acceptance and the compassion and forgiveness inspired by Jesus' spirit that leads people to know the fullness of what church is intended to be. In this atmosphere, we can feel free to be ourselves and express our worries and concerns, knowing that others will be supportive and we will be prayed for. That's what we experienced that day. Emmy Reynolds felt free to share about her little cousin, baby cousin Leo, how he wasn't doing well and yet was miraculously cured of a heart problem. Jacob Gillingham could open up in this atmosphere about his concern for his grandpa who was fighting cancer. Lexi Meyer shared about the def- difficulty of seeing her dad sick and in the hospital in a bad way. Many shared of how difficult it was to lose a grandparent. Many more items were discussed in that caring environment. That's the way church should be. And yet, when the tears flowed, they were surrounded by words, caring words and hugs. Jesus said that being a member of his church would reflect a great, a great and caring love. In fact, it is love that will be the most apparent in Jesus' disciples. And while he doesn't say it in this gospel lesson, it is this kind of love and care that will bring people to join us in real church. You see, Jesus helped us to be all for love. But one more thing happens naturally to disciples who know all of Jesus' love is that we realize that his love is for all. We are all for love and love for all. It's more than the three musketeers had with them as far as community. It's ones that can change the world, not just a country. Hear how some confirmants talked about this. I believe that my personal faith also includes a responsibility to be a good person to follow God's will in my life, says Leah Sutter. I believe that and trust in Jesus to guide me. My mom taught me her favorite Bible verse, which answers the question of what God asks of us. Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That's a pretty good goal for life, she writes. I hope that with the help of my family, friends, and involvement in the church community, I can accomplish it. Parker Darding, Darding says this. He, he's one who is pray. Praying is part of his spiritual giftedness. And this is what he said. He didn't just pray for himself. He prays for others. He says, I've prayed many times outside of the church. Whenever I know someone who has got sick or hurt, I pray for the person to regain strength. The biggest events that have got me to pray would be the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, the movie theater shooting in Colorado. I prayed for the families who lost loved ones. And Claire Alberg says this, My faith has given me hope. It teaches me that even if I feel the whole world has it in for me, 
there is something and some place I can turn to that doesn't judge. And I would like to share that with others. That feeling that someone will always care for you no matter what. I want to help people give that safe place that they can turn to whenever they need it. That desire to help others has also made my faith stronger. The idea that I can give back to people around me through it. I've always enjoyed assisting people who, who need help. And my, and my faith is another way in which I can do that. As disciples of Jesus, confirmants, you are called to take that love of Jesus with you throughout the world. People are aching to experience what you already know and have experienced yourself. Your invitation could be life-changing. So tell others of the love of Jesus. And not just the confirmants, everyone here needs to tell others about the love of Jesus. But don't forget to keep caring for one another, confirmants. After I was confirmed, I wandered from the church for a while. I know that was a long time ago, but I still wandered. After three years of wandering, do you know who brought me back into the loving embrace of Jesus' church? It was a girl from confirmation class. All right, she was cute. <laughs> but that isn't what attracted me, mostly. It was a reminder that Jesus loved me no matter how I wandered and what I did in my wandering. I'm asking you to be there for one another. To help you remember that, I've got this gift here for you guys. How many of you know what the Three Musketeers saying is? All for one and one. Look at her, I think that class said not people here. <laughs> That's why I changed it for all to all for love and love for all. That's what we're to be about. And help you remind you that I have these these cool pens that are sword shaped. All right, so you can lift it up and say all for love. You know, <laughs> maybe you'll remember the dorky things I do. All right. <laughs> and the sword is the thing is something you use. It's a deed, uh, something you do for deeds. Right? I mean. You don't just hold on to a sword. It's meant for action. So you need to have an action with your love for all and all for love. And so that's one way that we show God's love to people is by our actions. I want to remind you of that. But I also, or at least I found these really nice heart, uh, what are they? Notepads. Pad, notepads, okay? All right, so these are also... We're supposed to love with our deeds, our actions, and our words. Our words, in word and deed, it says, we'll talk about later. And so, not only are we all for love and love for all in our deeds, but also in our words, how we talk to people, how we talk to ourselves. And that is important. So we want to give you both these gifts as a way to remind you that, can you say it? All for love and love for all. Let's hear it. You sound so excited. All right. All right. So you could pass those around maybe uh, and remind yourself of that. So God's blessings as uh, you go out in the world and make a difference in this world, swinging out your pens of all for love and love for all, writing on people's hearts the love of Jesus. Amen. Holy God, we are grateful that you come to us and we are just people ordinary people, and yet you love us the way we are, sinners, we are or people who are confused often, but we are definitely people who need your love. When we need that love expressed in a real way, help us to find those around us who know that your love, and help us to be that for others when they are confused or hurt or need abandoned in need of knowing that you are near. Help us to be the flesh of that blessing the laying on of hands in words and deeds of a heart. Help us to be all for love and love for all. Amen.